Four rings, a slave connecting rod that moves in an oval motion, oval pistons, a circle hiding secrets in the center of the piston. Could it be diesel? It's true, Ferrari doesn't make diesel engines, but it's a close friend of Fiat, which is a close friend of Iveco, so their patent could also be its patent. So what is this new patent they filed? When I copied the images to recreate them in 3D, things started to get strange. They all have weird dimensions, like a connecting rod opening at 130 degrees, different distances from crankshaft to each piston pin, or simple questions. How are they going to tighten the top bolt on the rod cap if the slave rod blocks access for the wrench? Is Ferrari really patenting oval pistons? Or maybe it's just about confusing other automakers. Is there anything useful here at all? Could it be management pushing for patents just to meet targets? Maybe they receive government subsidies and credits for inventing. But let's set those questions aside and start at the beginning. First, we have the crankshaft, which has a crank pin for a single rod. From here, the connecting rod comes out. Then we have the cap. This cap has a pinhole to hold a slave rod. These rods are connected to pistons. The pistons are oval, though actually it's more like a rectangle with semicircular ends, like a running track. As we can see, by aligning both rods, the engine becomes more compact. In a conventional V engine, rods are side by side. This slightly offsets the cylinders and makes the engine longer. Look at any typical V engine, it's not a perfect mirror, it's staggered. This makes the engine longer and takes up more space. But with Ferrari's design, when used in sports cars, the engine is shorter, shifting the weight toward the center. This helps achieve a 50-50 weight distribution, resulting in better handling. The ideal method is using fork and blade rods, where one fits into the other without contact. But this usually requires a longer crank pin than master and slave. Each rod still needs the same bearing surface to handle combustion loads. You can see the forked rod has two small surfaces and the blade one has a wide one. Ferrari's idea makes it more compact. In this engine, one piston combusts at a time. They never fire simultaneously. So the bearing surface can be the one of a single rod. But this comes with a twist. First, it moves in an oval path. Second, the slave cylinder stroke is longer than the master's. I drew the sleeves the same length, but the slave piston drops lower while the master doesn't. How is that possible? The master rod rotates in a circle controlled by the crankshaft, but also influenced by the piston's tilt inside the cylinder. This makes the slave rod's pin move in an elliptical path. That increases the stroke length and with it, the displacement. Ferrari mentions in the patent that it's a V12, so we have to multiply this increase by 6, not a minor change. The right bank of cylinders operates evenly. Each stroke is 180 degrees of the crankshaft. Intake, compression, combustion, exhaust. But the left side is modified. As shown, the piston exceeds 180 and keeps descending until 200 degrees. Then it only ascends 160 degrees to complete the cycle. This stretches the intake stroke by 20 degrees, increasing time and allowing more air in. Then compression becomes 20 degrees shorter. Combustion gets a longer stroke again, and the exhaust stroke shortens again to 160. The stroke length stays the same no matter if going up or down, but piston speed changes and are different between the descending and ascending ones, causing vibration. On the left side, you can even see through the engine, but not on the right. If we compare the rod clearance against the block, we see it passes far at the top and close to the bottom. This is similar to cylinder offset, but in this case, reversed. The rod angle is less favorable, combustion happens faster at the top, and there's more rod tilt, pushing the piston harder against the cylinder wall and increasing wear, among other issues. Okay, but putting a pinhole in the cap for a slave rod, is that a new technology? Usually that hole is in the top of the rod, not the cap. And as we saw, the bolts end up in a very awkward position. Normally angled rods use bolts that point downward, here, they point up. Besides being hard to tighten, I guess the cap is first installed and then the pin for the slave rod is inserted, a very inconvenient process that multiplies with six cylinders. The traditional method, used for over 100 years, is clearly better. Even some motorcycles use this system. We can also consider aircraft engines, where slave cylinders have longer strokes than masters. I think the master slave rod idea is okay. 
It allows it to use a 120 degree block angle easily, but now the bolts could be exposed to high loads, and the block angle can also be achieved with the pin in the upper part. Perhaps it's a decoy to catch the attention of people like us to talk about it. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the oval pistons. Oval pistons aren't new. Honda made engines with them decades ago to increase valve area and improve airflow. Not just for racing, they even made a road version. But it was limited in units and extremely expensive. It's rather a collector's item. Ferrari, on the other hand, wants to make the engine more compact. Displacement depends on bore and stroke. Bigger bore and longer stroke mean more air, thus more displacement. But a big bore engine is physically large, with lots of wasted space, and long strokes make the engine tall. Oval pistons reduce that wasted space by making the engine more square and proportional rather than just long and tall. But there's always a trade-off. Piston rings seal well in curved areas, but not in flat ones, leading to gas leaks, loss of compression, oil burning, etc. To fix that, Ferrari uses four rings. Perhaps by using an extra one, they hope to improve sealing and avoid oil burn, important for today's emission standards. If Honda did this 50 years ago, maybe it's easier now. Another possibility is that this engine is meant to run inverted. Mercedes-Benz already did this with the DB600, and those pistons used more rings too. In fact, Ferrari recently patented an inverted six-cylinder engine. Combining both patents could result in the engine on screen. It's a possibility. Let's flip it back now. As shown, the engine uses replaceable sleeves. This could also simplify repairs, as many shops don't have hones that move horizontally. Ferrari's layout also differs from Honda's. Honda's pistons were parallel to the crankshaft, almost like a V8 with cylinders fused together. Using two connecting rods, and all valves were directly operated by the camshafts. Easy. Ferrari, however, rotates the pistons 90 degrees, placing them perpendicular to the crankshaft. In my opinion, this lets them fit six valves instead of eight. It also requires two camshafts and now rocker arms in different directions. That leaves space for a central spark plug. Or maybe Ferrari only wants two huge valves per cylinder. Though if the valves are too big, they won't leave space near the cylinder wall for airflow. The exact balance must be found to maximize efficiency. However, this two-valve setup might allow for three spark plugs per cylinder. In a round cylinder, the central spark plug ignites the mix and the flame front spreads evenly. In an oval cylinder, distant ends take longer to ignite, reducing efficiency. Remember, the piston's moving down, and if the mix doesn't ignite in time, that energy is lost. With two valves and three spark plugs, this could work perfectly and simply. But placing pistons perpendicularly causes another issue. Honda's layout had less piston tilting. Ferrari's layout has more movement, causing more cylinder wear. Finally, the central hole in the piston. Why is there a well in the center? And the official diagram shows no valve reliefs. In fact, it looks like a diesel piston. And if we add a central injector and two vertically arranged valves, we will obtain a diesel cylinder head. And it doesn't even end there. If we consider that it has 12 cylinders and huge displacement, it can be used in trucks. Also, using four rings, as we saw, could mean it's for a large vehicle and 20 to 1 compression like diesels use. Some need more rings to achieve that. If we invert the engine, it's easier to service from underneath without tilting the cab. And remember, the goal was a shorter engine, ideal for cab over trucks. That's one possibility. Although, I believe the circle with a zigzag line means the piston shape is undisclosed to keep it secret, probably matching the valve and spark plug arrangement of a gasoline engine. I also doubt they'll use that chamfer. They'll probably go with a more conventional shape, like modern pistons with a central well and valve reliefs. Anyway, the Ferrari patent shows many previously invented ideas, like Honda's oval pistons, now rotated for a shorter engine, master slave rods, but with a complicated mounting method in the rod cap, strange engine geometry with confusing but potentially beneficial angles and dimensions, a central well that could mean diesel or a secret piston shape, four rings to improve the poor ceiling or for diesel use, or to improve oil control if combined with the inverted engine pad. Will any of this see production? Or are they all just to distract other automakers with something useless? Maybe they receive government subsidies and credits for inventing. To tell the truth, this patent raises more questions than answers, but honestly, I'd love to see an engine with these pistons on the road. 
Honda had the patent for oval pistons, but since it was filed in 1970 and is over 20 years old, it is now free to be used by anyone without paying anything. Which of all these did you find most interesting and think might be used? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit that super thanks, join the channel, like, subscribe, share this analysis with your friends, and do whatever else YouTube lets you do with this video. But do them all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.